Okay, friends, give this video here a thumbs up if you are ready to work on some more math problems. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Yes, me too. We are going to go through some great math problems, five problems in this video that will really help prepare you for your GED or your high set test. And if you're new here, definitely click subscribe and I want everyone to do me a favor and share this video with one person. Share it with a student, share it with a teacher, share it with someone that you know would benefit from this. Okay, let's get started on those math problems. Question number 16. Melody is making a spinner with a 12 inch diameter for a game. She will divide the following spinner into sections. What is the area in square inches of section C? Okay, so first thing we need to do is remember what diameter is. So if I draw a circle, not my best circle, <laughs> and I bring it across, that's going to be the diameter, right? You order a pizza, you order a 12 inch pizza, that's gonna be the diameter all the way across. 12, right there. But actually we don't want the diameter because if I were to look at my formula sheet, I would see the area for a circle is going to be pi r squared. But I have my diameter, not my radius. But I know here that radius, two radius equals the diameter. So if my diameter is 12, half of that is going to be my radius, right? So my radius is going to be six. So knowing that, I can start solving this. So here we have area equals pi times r, pi r, which is six squared. Okay, now I know that six squared, or six times six is 36. So I have here area equals 36 pi, because we like to put the number before the symbol. And look at that B, right there is an answer. But is B my right answer? No, because that's not what we're looking for, right? It says, what is the area in square inches of section C? So B is the area of the entire spinner, of the entire circle, but that's not what we're looking for. So let's look at C. So C, we have 45 degrees, right? So 45 degrees over what is the entire degree of the circle? It's 360, right? So just imagine, you know, someone spins, right? They do a 360. That's what we say, that's what we call it. So what does that mean? That means 360 degrees is what they went around. So that is what a circle is. So 45 divided by 360 is just going to be 1 eighth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine this with this and that will give me my answer. So 36 pi times 1 eighth is actually going to give me approximately 4.5 pi. So there we go, C is our answer. Question number 17. A lighting designer created a program for the opening of a stage show. When the show starts, 10 lights are on. So I'm just gonna write here, when it starts, we have 10 lights. And then every 30 seconds, so 30 seconds, one more light comes on. If T is the time in minutes, oh, notice it says minutes, and L is the number of lights that are on, so, so T equals time and L equals light, which function best models the number of lights that are on after T minutes of the show? Okay, now notice it keeps talking about minutes, not seconds, and here it says 30 seconds is one, one light goes on. So we're actually just gonna turn that into two lights is one minute, okay? And that will make it just a little bit easier since we're not dealing with seconds. Now we're kind of comparing apples to apples instead of apples and oranges, okay? So here we have L is the light. So L is the light. Now we know that right when it starts, there's 10, right? So we're gonna put a plus 10 right there and that actually eliminates D and E. But then every one minute a light turns on. So we can say two T. So for every, cause T is time. So one minute there are two lights that are turning on and there are 10 that have started. So that gives us B as our answer. 
We could even play with this a little further. Let's say we're five minutes into the show. How many lights would be on? So let me change my color here. And let's say that T equals five. I would say L equals two times five five plus 10, and then that would give me 10 plus 10. And I would know that five minutes into the show, there would be 20 lights. But we really don't even need this because that's just a little bit extra. But that's again, checking our work. Does the answer that we provided this equation, does it make sense? Yes, because we figured it out, right? We used an example that showed, okay, yes, this does make sense. Question 18. A radio station ordered hats and coffee mugs to give away as prizes. A total of 1,000 of these items were ordered. Three times as many coffee mugs were ordered as hats. In which equation does H represent the number of hats ordered? Okay, so we had a total, so our, our hats plus our coffee mugs equals 1,000, right? Because there were 1,000 ordered total. And we know here that the coffee mugs is equal to three times that of the hat. So let's figure out how many it equals, okay? So I could just say here that hats plus, so I'm gonna use this equation right here, but put instead of C, put in the 3H, 3H for three hats, because we're trying to solve for hats equals 1,000. So now we're just gonna solve, solve for the H, so 1H, plus 3H, 4H equals 1,000. Divide that by four to get rid of it. And I'm left with H equals 250. Oh my goodness. I was like going all the way around. I don't, I don't need to solve for it, right? Uh, we actually just, we don't, we don't need to solve for it. We could just go uh, right here, ease our answer. So 1,000 divided by four is our H. Sometimes I just get a little too excited. I don't, I don't want to stop at the equation, right? I want to just solve the whole thing. Question 19. Volunteers are needed to do a total of 60 hours of work at a concert. So my, my volunteers, 60 hours total. The shortest volunteer shift is two hours. So two hours and the longest is three hours. Which inequality shows V the number of volunteers needed. So let's let's figure out how many people, if we were just to do the shortest hours, how many people we would need. So I could go 60 divided by two, and that's going to be 30 people. So that's gonna be the most number of people that we're gonna need, right? So then if I were to take the 30, I guess the 60 and divide that by three, 60 divided by three is 20. So I need at least 20, but no more than 30. So notice here how all of these A through E, they all have the same numbers, right? So they all have our 20 something V to 30. Okay, so let's just focus on the 20 and the V. So my 20 means that that is the most that I need, right? I don't need any more than 20. So I need 20 is less than or equal to V. Because like we said, I, I don't need any less than 20. 20 or less. Now 30, I need 30 or less as well. Now looking at V and 30, I know here that V needs to be less than 30. So V needs to be greater than or equal to 20, because 20 is the, I need at least 20 people but then I need 30 or less people. So V falls right in between that 20 and 30. And for a problem like this, really talking through it and being like, okay, uh, this is how many people, maybe I could use 22 or 25 people, walking through this in my mind, less than 30, but more than 20, that kind of, that kind of helps me. Okay, so our answer here then is E. Question number 20. Jenna bought some apples for $1.25 per pound. So we're gonna call apples A 
for $1.25 per pound and avocados for $4 per pound. Now, because we're dealing with avocados and apples, I can't call them both A. So I'm gonna call avocados V and those were $4 per pound. Altogether, she spent $14.25 for seven pounds of apples and avocados. So I know here that my apples plus my avocados equal 14.25. And I also know that my avocado plus my apple equals seven, right? Because she bought seven pounds total. So what is the total number of pounds of avocados Jenna bought? Okay, let me tell you. The first time I did this problem as I was kind of practicing before the video, I did it wrong. I said she bought seven pounds of apples and then I was trying to figure out how many pounds of avocados. But no, it says total seven pounds of avocados and apples. Okay, so that makes a huge difference. Make sure you really read the questions thoroughly and look for what they're asking for. Okay, so what is the total number of pounds of avocados Jenna bought? Okay, so really I need to focus on my avocados, not on my apples. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this equation right here and I'm going to solve for the avocados, okay? Or I'm going to solve for the apples. So I'm gonna subtract the avocados from both sides, and then I have apples equals seven minus avocado, and I'll use that in just a moment. So now let's take a look at this equation right here. We need to put the dollar amount of each of the produce items in addition to the total amount. So I'm gonna say 1.25 apples plus four avocados equals 14 25. And now I can solve for it. I want to figure out how many apples I have though. And I just figured that out right here, right? Apples equals seven minus avocado. So in place of this A right here, that's what I'm going to put. So I'm going to go 1.25 times that by seven minus V because A equals seven minus V plus four V equals 14.25. And now all I have to do is solve for it. So first thing we'll go 1.25 times seven and that gives us 8.75 minus, I'm going to go 1.25 times V which gives us 1.25 V plus four V equals 14.25. So let's combine like terms. So I can go right here, can add the negative 1.25 plus the four, and that gives me 8.75 plus 2.75 V equals 14.25. Okay, now we need to combine like terms. Again, so I can subtract this 875 from both sides minus 8.75, because whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. This cancels and I'm left with 2.75V equals 5.5. And now I always like to use my marker and sing to it. Avocados, how do I get you alone? How do I get it alone? I divide. Right, so I'm gonna divide by 2.75 on both sides and this cancels and I'm left with V equals, so 5.5 divided by 5.75 equals two right there. Two pounds of avocados is how much she bought. So here's the question, how many pounds of apples did she buy? Five, right, because seven minus two is five. But I don't think avocados are ever sold like that. Like when I go to the grocery store, it's, you know, one avocado costs $1.50 or $3 or however much the avocado costs. They never weigh avocados, it's just how much each avocado costs. But maybe, maybe your grocery store is different, I don't know. Okay, that was it. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Five math problems, great job my friends. Definitely watch this video again and again if you need to, to practice up these math problems a little bit more because it will really help you on GED or the high set test. Okay, I want you to comment down below and tell me I'm still here and that lets me know that you are purely persistent. Okay friends, believe in yourself just like I believe in you and I will see you in our next video. Peace and God bless.